I'm convinced as the scripture has conveyed, my people, not another group of people, but my people perish for lack of information. My son and daughter in the Lord are here from Rock Church. Rock Church, the apostle and his amazing wife, Vance and LaDonna, Sean and LaDonna Vance. I, you know, I get Vans, Olds, Vans, all of you Vans. Uh, give it up for this man and woman of God. I told you that Dr. Betty was just overwhelmed, right? I told you that? Uh, E-Campus, shout out to you. I met one of our E-Campus partners in Los Angeles on Friday. Bridget, God bless you. Thank you for identifying yourself. And there were two others that I cannot recall your name at the party on uh, Friday. Thank you for introducing yourselves. And join us for the MOL Fair here at Brandywine location. That's February the 18th. Yeah, have you been waiting to get involved to serve in the ministry of leaders? And all of you should have been waiting to get involved. Please come and learn about all the different ministries we have here. And then, of course, the fair will take place in the West Wing immediately after that particular service. Okay, are you ready for the word? We want to continue our lesson on TSA with just the TS, right? Total surrendering. All right, uh, go to the next place with this for me. And let's start there, where the white flag uh, is presenting in total surrendering. Uh, they're gonna help me out. Am I using this center screen or the side screens? Which one will I be using? I think the center, okay. And they have it there, but it isn't quite Large enough there. All right, total surrendering, total, total surrendering. I, 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 like, I, like, I like understanding and defining our words so that we'll be on the same page because the power to define is the power to fulfill. Uh, Dr. Price used to talk about years ago how he would encounter some of his colleagues maybe way back in the day and he would say to them, hey, you should have been with me today because I saw this fox. Now, now, what we had to deduce was, is he talking about a woman, a car, or an actual animal? See, because we define words by communities sometimes. That's what Webster, Webster just got enough people to agree to this word being this definition or this definition being this word, and that's how they've come to deduce or conclude that. So we want to make sure when we talk about total and surrendering, we're all on the same page. Is that all right, class? Yes. I say, is that okay, class? Yes. All right, let's go. Total. A whole or complete amount involving what? All. All aspects of what, class? The whole. Absolute, whole, or entire. All. The Greek halos, meaning all, entire, whole, complete in every part. See, when we discuss giving your life to the Lord, we're not talking about parts of it. We're talking about your whole life. He wants to be Lord of all. And sometimes we dispense what we want him to be Lord over based upon our leisure or our convenience. You know, I want you, as we are going through this time together in the Word, I want you to highlight that thing that you have a bent towards, a proclivity to conduct like on a regular. What, what do you do on a regular, like almost weekly, if not daily, that's not in agreement with God? 
like, like what, what part of your life you have managed in a way that you are allowing something that is not in agreement with God to just hang out with you? You know, whether it be manipulation. How many manipulators do we have here? You didn't raise your hand? Okay. What about liars? Yeah, liars. Okay. We got one over here. Okay. These are like, um, these are like uh, rhetorical. That's what I was looking for. These are like rhetoricals. Questions? I, they are not intended for you to. Well, I just want to raise your thoughts. How, how about, how about those who are promiscuous, fornicators? Who, like, indulges on the regular pornography? Turn to your neighbor and say, please don't raise. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, adulterers. I mean, there, there are people, you have intestinal women, but your mind, the Bible says, if you're thinking in your heart, But I'm talking about this is perpetually. In perpetuity, you have these things that are going on in your routine, in your weekly routine that are not in alignment with the Word of God. Maybe I haven't been down your street yet. Oh, okay, I'll go this way. Like gluttony. You, you just had one piece of cake. And that, that cake said, you know I was good. Another slice won't hurt. After all, tomorrow's Monday. Start then. Boy, I, I can't tell you how many Christians are going to have to repent for Mondays. No, you are indulging so much that it is not in agreement with God where it's impacting your health and then you're going to ask the healer to heal you and he's giving you the principles by which you... Okay, that didn't go over so well. Okay, how about tardy for work? I mean, on a regular. Like, your life does not agree or line up with God when he tells you to look at your supervisor as unto the Lord. But you'll disrespect him every day by coming in late. Oh, this is what we do here. Not as a kingdom culture. Kingdom people walk higher than kingdoms of this world. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? I, I think this is going to make sense after we go a little further in it. Every part, i.e., perfectly sound, embodied. Go to 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. There we have it. I'm trying to make it as simple as possible for you. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you totally or completely. We did define this word. And may your total or your total spirit, your whole soul, and your complete body be preserved how? how for how long? until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Watch this. He, he calls, he who calls you is faithful and also what? Next scripture reference. Next slide. Galatians chapter number two. My old identity has been co-crucified with Christ and no longer lives. Well, the way I used to live, I don't live anymore. Now, what you're going to have to understand is behavior does not qualify you for a righteous lifestyle. Because on your best behavior, 
your righteousness or best behavior alone, the Bible describes as filthy rags. So he is only basing this, watch this, Cornell, based upon your belief. But your belief should begin to impact your behavior. And you should begin to reflect the kingdom of God so when people see you, they'll see the life of Jesus. I wonder who people would be following if they followed you. And you're constantly asking for more followers. Give me more likes. Share my page. <laughs> the anointed one lives his life through me. I like it. I like it a little better in the New King James. So put it up over there for me, media department. I know you're going to have to walk away from this for a moment, but put it up on the screen, the New King James Version, because one of us got to go. It got to be either Jesus or you. So somebody has to go. Because the minute you say, I'll make you Lord of my life, he then sat down on the throne of your choices, your actions, your objectives, your endeavors, your aspirations, your goals, et cetera, et cetera. I don't do anything without his permission. It's no longer my life. It's his life. My life stopped, ended, when I received his life. I forfeited the right to do life on my own. I had every intent on rolling a casket in here this morning. I was going to get one from my sister. I was going to give it back because I ain't got no use for it. But I was going to have you to write your name on a piece of paper, ball it up, throw it in the casket, we close it, and then roll you out, and then your life starts with Jesus brand new. Well, it's not, no longer about you. Would you rather for me to just explain what I was going to do than to roll a casket up? But I like the shock effect. But it didn't go along with this weekend. Yeah, it didn't. Nevertheless, one of us got to die. And based upon the scripture, he's already did, done it. Now what this says Put it up on the screen, Galatians and New King, James, New King James. This is the Apostle Paul. Now watch this. I have been crucified with Christ. How you do that? It is no longer I who lives. What? That's a conundrum. What do you mean? You've been crucified with Christ. Watch this. It is... It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Wait, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by what he's commanded me to do as the son of God. So I take the son of God's life and I establish it in, in me. So whatever I decide to do, guess where I got it from him first. How did you get over there when he ain't there? Part my vernacular. But if Jesus isn't in some of the places you go, how'd you get there? This isn't going over too well, is it? Go back to the slide. Let's watch this. He gave himself. Paul said, it's no longer my life. Go back. Come on back over. We can do this. Yeah. Surrendering to yield to the power of another, to give up, to resign the favor of another as to surrender a right or privilege. The act of submitting, the act of yielding to power or authority, surrender, watch this, of the person and the power to control or government of another. The Greek, uh, parodidami. Well, well, okay, whatever you come up with. To hand over, to turn yourself in. Do you know 
it works out a lot better when people turn themselves in than sometimes those who keep running. And sometimes their lives are ended because they didn't surrender. You got yourself in such a jam when you've been given every opportunity to turn yourself in. Woo! Shout, I'm turning myself in today and tomorrow and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'm turning myself in. Okay, let's look at Jeremiah 38. Jeremiah 38 and 20 says, they will not hand you over. Jeremiah replied, watch this, obey the Lord by doing what I tell you. Then it will do what, folks? It will go well with you and your life will be what? But if you refuse, this is what the Lord has revealed to me. Go to the next slide because I want to get a little further in this lesson. Romans 12, we've said it so many times. And I looked uh, profusely for uh, a word in the New Testament that said surrender from the original uh, King James Version from the New King James, and I couldn't find surrender. But when I went to the TPT translation, we'll see it here. Beloved friends, what should be our proper response to God's marvelous mercy? To surrender yourselves. Surrender yourselves to God to be his sacred living sacrifice. You know, most sacrifices they would take to the altar and they would present it by killing it. Well, you can't kill this sacrifice. You got to live this sacrifice out, but you got to be dead to everything that this sacrifice wants to do. Your body wants to do some things that your spirit doesn't want to do. But guess who's in control? The soul. That's why the soul has to be renewed. Your mind is going to have to be renewed to the ways of Jesus in order to present Jesus. But if you are not in the Word of God getting your mind renewed and dedicated to the things of God, you're going to continue in things and not know at times other than your conscience that I am not agreeing with God. How do you lie so freely? What's worse than anything are people who lie and really don't have to. A lie should be used for the time of trouble. <laughs> and all who agree said amen. amen. Oh my God, no. <laughs> oh, we got to get fixed. Oh, Jesus, help us. Come on, turn yourself in. <laughs> and live in holiness, experiencing all that delights his heart, not your heart. Some of you get a kick out of being bitter towards others. You love to see them suffer by your punishing them for something they've done in the past. Pastor Terry said, revenge, bitterness, is unfulfilled revenge. You got to turn yourself in. Let's, let's, let's go on. Stop imitating the ideas and the opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly what? transformed by Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. Your thinking is wrong. Your thinking is wrong about being with your wife. Your thinking is wrong about being with your husband. That's why in spite of what Dr. Didi would ever do, she's my wife for life. There are no deal breakers in my house. That's my covenant partner. The scripture tells me to love my wife even as Christ loved the church. When, he, when has he ever left her or forsaken her? In spite of her. We see scriptural examples of that with Hosea. We see that. He and Gomer. That girl went out and played the harlot. But guess what he did? He went out there 
and auctioned her, bid it for his wife because she could have been sold as a slave. That's how I'm connected to this. This is not my life. It's not my, it's not your life. How do you keep deciding to do the things you're doing without Jesus' permission? It's not your life. You forfeited the right to make choices and decisions on your own. He says, seek first the kingdom of God and the way he would do it. And all these things will be, you're so busy trying to do life. I did it more. Come on, stop it. You cannot, you're not Frank Sinatra. So I surrendered. And when I wanted to say something so badly back to Dr. Didi, come on, man, you know how wives are. <laughs> Brothers, don't leave me out here by myself. <laughs> don't leave me this word. <laughs> you try to give them the prudence, the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding, and then they're going to come up with what I think who asked you to think? <laughs> and all the ladies said. <laughs> Somebody said, hold up. Wait a minute. And it's in those times, Larry, Brother Larry, Didi will say something. Everything in me wants to respond. And Jesus will say, don't say a thing. And I'm, 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 let, let's make a deal. Because I'm telling you, if I say this, it's going to be a wrap. He said, yeah, in more ways than you realize. <laughs> but then I, I got to, how many of y'all know you got to say it? How many of y'all know, you ladies know you got to say it? And I've seen it where I've allowed Jesus to live his life through me. And I've seen it where I have not. And letting him live his life through me is far better than my life living through me. Oh, my. Let's go a little further. Stop imitating da 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 This will empower you to discern God's will. Back up. I didn't finish. When I want you to turn, no. Uh, see, that, see, I didn't have to say that. It just, it just came up, and everything in me was saying, don't say it. But it, it, it happened so quick. But I was playing, too. <laughs> this will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, a satisfying life and perfect in his eyes. Oh, my word. Can I just release to you a beautiful life, a satisfying life that's beautiful in his eyes? I wish it was that simple. Ladies and gentlemen, this beautiful, satisfying, and, and, and what else? And perfect life can only be accomplished by changing your thinking. The way I see it, see, that's where you're blowing it. The minute you convince yourself you are dead and you only see it God's way. See, a lot of people think I'm against homosexuality or I'm against uh, lesbianism or I'm against fornication or, or, or adultery, all of those promiscuous things, you know, sexually and moral things. People think I'm against them. Jesus is against him. He told me what to say. I wouldn't be saying these things on my own. I would be saying, it's your life. Live it to its fullest. I would not be saying, take your enemy to lunch. Dr. King once stated that this agape is the only thing, only force that has the ability to transform an enemy to a friend. I've seen it happen too many times. Love never fails. And what we fail to do is give love a decent shot. Let's do it God's way. I've seen so many enemies.
become my friends because I stayed on them. I wouldn't let them not like me. How do you not like me? Because I'm bringing Jesus to you. To reject me is to reject Jesus. What did he just say? Turn and tell your neighbor. He said, to reject me is to reject Jesus. Jesus once said, if they reject you, they have rejected me because I've surrendered my life. I've surrendered my life. It's no longer I who lives, but Christ lives through me. So all the ideations or ideologies that I had once upon a time, like, I promise you, I wouldn't be doing this if this was my life. I would not be living in this fishbowl for people to attack me at will. I didn't ask for this. Most of you all know, are you aware? It is not 1205. Are you trying to convey to me that I'm, <laughs> oh, yes, it is. <laughs> if Tim wouldn't be singing Kirk Carr for 39 minutes, 40 seconds, and then he gonna have the nerve to stand up and defend his life, wife and, and waste more time. <laughs> Can I have two more slides? We don't have nightcap. It's super, so y'all ready to get home? Can I show you two slides? Yeah. All in favor? Yeah. Any opposed? We don't care. All right. <laughs> Here's my objective. Oh, Jesus, help me with this. To create a success map or plan for every partner to prosper. Amen. Do you not know that this is possible? How many partners? Yes. Partners to what? Awesome. How many of y'all know it pleases God when I prosper? Yes. And I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about joy mm. and the time when your friend goes to be with the Lord unexpectedly. I prosper. I prosper in these moments because of what I know. I can't be overtaken in grief and sorrow because I have this success map. You hear me, Brian? I have this success map. Yeah, yeah, you, Brian. I met Brian coming in the door. He was coming through the wrong door. Brian came in with me. <laughs> and security is like, oh, sir, you're going to have to go the other way? I said, no, he doesn't. Brian's with me. Then I said, Brian, just go that way. These people, man, they give him a little pool and they. <laughs> you know, having peace is prospering, yes. as angry. And as sad as I am, I have peace. The Bible says you can be angry and not sin. And some of you wives, what you don't know, you're attacking your husbands and they don't have peace. And you're so selfish, you're making it about you. You're making it about you. And the man just needs peace. He has no peace. He just wants peace. He wants peace in his life. He's been downtrodden. He's been talked about and put down and then he gets home and then he has to hear your mouth and you're not being led by the spirit of God at all. All you're thinking about is you. What hurt and frustration and anger could he have that nobody is seeking to get to the bottom of it and he needs peace. He's devoid of peace. And as an intercessor, intercessor is not someone who prays, but you can. 
an intercessor is the one who takes the position of standing in the gap. Father, thank you for the peace of my husband. Thank you for the peace of my family. You are the Prince of Peace. If you succeed enough, it will become difficult or possibly even impossible to fail. That's, that's what I know about going after my enemies with this love. That's what I know about taking my enemies to lunch with this love. <clears throat> Y'all may not like me for this next statement. Anytime anyone has a preference, what they're about to say, they should rethink it. And I have. I want to teach you, mm. okay, brace yourselves. I want to teach you how to love the hell out of people. Okay, I, I didn't mean to be offensive. I, I didn't mean to be embracing. No, I didn't cuss. No, literally, people are experiencing hell. When is someone going to turn the table and have any empathy or compassion? People are going through hell in life, and you think it's about you? and they're miserable, and they need the Jesus you carry, but then you respond to them. And this kingdom is higher. We've been raised up far above principalities and power. We've been seated in, seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We live higher than these earthlings. We're in this world, there's people are supposed to be saying, oh, they're different. Jesus said, as I'm closing, if my kingdom was of this world, my people would fight. But because we're not of this world, we don't have to lift a finger we fight the good fight of faith. And the best news about it, ladies and gentlemen, we win. I said we win. Love never fails, but you got to be total surrender. Totally surrender. That was a note. And he walks with me. And he talks. Uh, pardon me, this is a solo. <laughs> let, let that mask. If you don't know, you don't know. And he walks with me. And he talks, I, I said, alone. You know, the word in Espanol for only is solo. And he walks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me, I am his own. And the joy we share. As we tell none other has ever no. Ah. Ah.
Come on, let's stand so that we can be dismissed. Yeah, yeah. I hear. We win, people of God, but we have to surrender. We have to surrender our lives. It's, it can't be just a song. It has to be a demonstration. You can do all things through Christ that gives you the ability. Hey fam, I'm Sanaya and I want to personally thank you for tuning in to today's service. I know you had an amazing encounter with God, but guess what? It does not have to stop there. If you want to receive salvation, find a church home, or even receive Apostle Mike and Dr. Dee Dee Freeman as your pastors, feel free to scan the QR code on the screen. We would love to have you join us for one of our services in person so you can join us at 8 a.m. at our Temple Hills location or 10 a.m. at our Brandywine in Baltimore location. And lastly, don't forget to share your takeaways because as our apostle always says, we're teaching you so that you can teach someone else. We can't wait to see you soon and I pray that you have an amazing week.